If you've been wanting to take a closer look at the Counter-Tac 1 and 2 from Cold Steel, I believe you clicked on the right video. Stay tuned. As of late, daggers have really been on my radar. You know, I picked up the mini leather neck from Cold Steel a few weeks back. A couple of weeks ago, I did a YouTube short on the HRT from Smith & Wesson. And that's a really cool knife, especially at its price point. But man, these counterattacks from Cold Steel are just in a league of their own. But we're not just gonna be looking at the counterattack one, but we're gonna be looking at the counterattack two as well. I get sent a lot of blades to review, but every Cold Steel knife that I've ever reviewed, I have paid for out of pocket and I just knew I had to add these to the collection. So first we're gonna look at the packaging. You can tell there's a significant size difference between these two blades. This is our counterattack one. We're looking at a five inch blade, off eight steel, coming in at 4.5 ounces, a five millimeter thick blade. It's got a four and a half inch handle. It's Cray X and our counterattack two, our mini version has a blade length of three and three eighths inches, all eight steel, 2.1 ounces, four millimeter thick blade, and a three and three eighths inch Cray X handle. So we're gonna start out looking at the counterattack one here. Uh, comes with a really nice sheath, locks in there very well. It's got this pocket or belt clip, however you wanna mount it. If you wanted to turn it this way, you could probably do something with zip ties like I'll do or paracord from time to time, you know, but this is really great. And this is one, seriously fine combat blade we've got us a nice stone wash finish here it's a very interesting blade design i want to kind of show you this from this angle just hits really hard something interesting to note about the counter tack is i do believe that this is the knife that was showcased in john wick chapter two now i'm not making a definitive statement there i'm just saying that this looks just like the blade that was used by Cassian's character, played by Common. He was the bodyguard for Gianna D'Antonio. The first fight between Cassian and John Wick took place in Rome, but when John made it back to New York, he had to face Cassian again on the subway train. And when they got ready to face off, I do believe this is the exact blade that he pulled from behind his back. Here's a very quick clip. Let me know what you think. I don't know about you, but I think that seriously looks like the counterattack one. You know, unfortunately for Cassian, he was going up against Baba Yaga and it got used against him. This is just my opinion, but when it comes to a blade like this, you don't have to get so extra caught up on having the top of the line steel. I'm not gonna use this for bushcrafting. I'm not gonna get out and beat this knife to death every day. This is gonna be a knife that I carry around and hope that I don't have to use. One thing's for sure, Cold Steel is constantly putting their all eight steel blades through the ringer, and these things simply hold up. Let's take a look at the baby brother of the Counter-Tac, the Counter-Tac 2. It's basically the same thing. It's just much smaller, and it's four millimeters thick instead of five millimeters thick, but what a handy little blade. Just look at this, man. Double edge and very easy to carry around. This pocket clip is just extraordinary, or belt, however you wanna carry it, but it sits right down in the pocket very nicely. You can do all kinds of little stuff with this. This is kind of thin, so if you're gonna do like a zip tie for this, you'd have to have a really thin belt, uh, but you could hook a C-clip to it if you wanted to. If you wanted to carry it a different way, like maybe horizontally, you could probably get the C-clip out and do it that way. But man, I just think it sits real nice in the pocket and even would mount to the belt very well. And it's very, very discreet. And man, this could get the job done. This is a sweet little EDC for somebody who doesn't want to carry something as big as the Counter-Tac 1. On top of it all, something like this is gonna get along with most regulations a whole lot better. You know, this counterattack one, I would have to carry it openly in my state. I'd have to just mount it and carry it open. And there's times, man, when I'm down with open carry, it just depends on where I'm going and what I'm doing. You know, you gotta think about the territory. You gotta think about what kind of blade you might need. I'll tell you one thing that's been kind of on my mind a lot lately, and a lot of people might not like this, but man, we think about just having to defend ourselves against people but man i'm hearing about more and more you know fatal dog attacks people walking through neighborhoods getting mauled by dogs on the loose you know when you're carrying a blade every day don't just think about you know human assailants man there are animal assailants out there dogs that get loose that, that don't have any home raising any training they'll attack you man i'm hearing about one 
a fatality after the next with dog attacks. And I wonder if any of those people had a blade or anything to pierce with or anything to defend with. But my point is there's a lot of reasons why carrying a blade around every day is very important. I use water bottles a lot in my knife training. You know, we get out on the range and do target practice there. We do target practice with archery and everything else that we shoot, but I'm a firm believer that we need target practice with knives. It's not as easy as you think to pull a blade and be on target. With these counterattacks, especially, I love to do piercing exercises such as these. A great training drill, put something small like this on top of a pole or a post or whatever, see if you can pierce it without knocking it off. Not so easy. I love the subject of combat knives. I've done YouTube videos on what makes a good combat knife and what do you think is the best combat knife. And I've got to tell you, man, something like the counterattack is way up there at the top just for the way that it's built. Now, one of the disadvantages to these kinds of blades is they are heavily regulated and depending upon where you live, you may not be able to carry one of these. I'll tell you what though, if you're able to carry two blades, It'd be really sweet to have this one on your side and this one concealed as a backup last ditch option. Man, look at that tag team right there. Gotta love it. To all my knife lovers out here, man, we understand one thing and that is the struggle is real with regards to collecting blades. It seems like you can't ever have enough knives. One of the ways that I have tried to justify <laughs> my addiction is Sometimes when it comes to knives, I compare it to like the way women are with pocketbooks and shoes, man. No woman's got one pair of shoes. No woman's got one pocketbook. They like different ones at different times. It's just great having options. And uh, I know that I'm going to be walking around with these sweet things a lot. I just want to take a moment to thank you for watching this video. I got the best subscribers in the world. I want to thank all the new visitors who have stopped in, man. We got the best community here on YouTube, man. I love our conversations back and forth and all the things that we share and all the ways we glean from one another. I'm gonna be dropping a link in the description for you to pick up one of these blades. Uh, you can get them Cold Steel, Amazon. There's a million places you can buy these. I'm a big fan of DLT trading. Midway's really good. I know a lot of people have shared with me deals that they found on Midway, so be sure to check Midway out. You got Knife Works, you got Blade HQ, so just go check all of those out and see which one has the best pricing. And until next time, take care, my friend.